Okay, hi chaps, just a really quick video. So the new uh, firmware, uh, version 3, has come out for the Sony A7R 3 and the Sony A7 Mark III. Um, I've just downloaded it and I've been playing around with it. Uh, kudos for Sony for giving us a couple of features which uh, I think we've, most of us have wanted, well certainly I I've wanted. Um, it has a bunch of little uh, little sort of updates in there. Uh, one of them is the, um, it's like a full-time IAF uh, mode which essentially finds the eye even when you, you're kind of not asking it to find the eye. So it's kind of like displayed on the screen, you get the little green box over the eye. Um, now for me personally, I had it set up as, I had my IAF set up as my um, custom button with the AEL. Uh, so it, it basically works the same as how I had it before. Apparently it's slightly improved, but for, for me personally it works how I had it before, except for I don't need to hold the button on the back, so it's just kind of like it's always on if you want it on, you can disable it obviously. Um, anyway, so for me personally that doesn't seem hugely different, except for the fact I don't need to hold down a button on the back, uh, which is a benefit because it's one less thing for your, your fingers to do. So either way, that that's good, I haven't fully tested it, but apparently it's improved and it, it definitely you can see that it's working differently on the um, on the back of the screen because it's, it's finding the eye even when you're not asking it to find the eye. So that's that can only be a good thing. Uh, another thing we have is we have we now have actual a proper intervalometer. So we have time lapse in camera. We've always had the S and Q, but the S and Q isn't actually very good. Uh, isn't very high quality. You know, it's not doing it in rules. It's not it's not giving the options that a proper time lapse um, you know videographer, photographer, whatever you want to call them uh, wants. But now we have got proper time lapse in camera. Um, in like the old Sony, you'd have to download an app to enable uh, proper time lapse intervalometer, or buy you know something separate like an actual in in uh, intervalometer or like a Syrup Genie or something like that, which it controls the camera. Uh, you know, a third-party device basically. So that's really cool. And so to find that, you basically want to go into the menu and go to the uh, the first folder, and then it's the fourth page along. And then you've got your intervalometer shoot function or intvl dot shoot dot funk dot basically. Uh, and then you've got your end, you know, your start time, so you can have a bit, a bit of a delay, you know, if there's a camera wobble on the tripod after pressing the button or something like that. So you can change your start time and then your interval time and then number of shots and different uh, auto exposure tracking sensitivity. I mean, I would generally do that in manual anyway, so I just I use it in, in the manual mode and not worry about that. But um, either way, it seems to have the kind of options that you're going to want for for a decent uh, time lapse. So one thing I'll say about that, if you're if you're not used to doing that, um, if you're using RAW, now RAW is obviously going to give you a lot more scope. It's more work in post to deal with the RAW the RAW files. But bear in mind that the if you if you if you put your interval too close together, um, the RAW can get backed up and it can mess mess up your time lapse. So if you if you're going for something like one second intervals or or shorter. Um, then probably don't use RAW. I mean, I haven't fully tested this yet, but I've had a couple of times when I've tried to do one second intervals in RAW and it, it's kind of, it's freaked out after a little while because it can't sort of keep up with one, you know, the RAW's going chunk, 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 chunk going in. So put your interval at longer if you're doing RAW is my suggestion. It's just a sort of a general rule of thumb. I've not tested it exactly where the cutoff is at the moment. Uh, but bear that in mind, that's, an, that's another aside. Let's get back to the uh, the firmware. So another good, um, for me, because one of the criticisms I had when I, when I first got the Sony, um, and it's with, with, with the Sony a7 III, and it's been with all the Sonys really, but um, I find menu operation a pain in the ass compared to most other cameras. One of the reasons, because I'm so used to having a one-handed operation on the back of the camera with most of my other cameras, like Panasonic and all the rest of it. But with the Sony, you can do one-handed operation, but because the menu button is up here, you have to reach over the screen and then do use the scroll wheel, do 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 do, and then reach over the screen, do the scroll wheel. So if you're going in and out of menus, or you know going down into the drill downs and coming back up, you have to be constantly reaching across the entire screen to hit the menu button, which I've always found difficult and uh, annoying. Basically, you know, it's not really difficult; it's just annoying. Uh, well, you now can set the the menu button to a custom key, so I could set it to my C4 trash button or, or something like that. Haven't done that yet, but I, I, I will be doing that in just a minute. Um, and I think yeah, that that's gonna be good for, for those of us to kind of like shoot with one hand on the lens and then your thumb doing all the kind of, the hard kind of menu work at the back here. Um, I think that's really good because it just means that we kind of have to do less 
um, hand gym gymnastics to operate the menu efficiently, basically. So uh, there's a few other little updates in the firmware, but um, anyway, so I'm pretty happy with all that. I'm gonna go out and test the, the time-lapse op operation uh, properly right now. Um, I'll stick on a little um, uh, video at the end of this so you can get an idea. Uh, what that looks like, uh, but yeah, from my first little um, tests, yeah, it seems to be all good. Uh, you know, I don't. I, I, I'm also going to test the uh, the video uh, autofocus. Uh, if that has improved, I'll stick on a video of that at the end. If it's sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll re say that again. I'm just about to test the video autofocus on adapted lenses because I have some Sony lenses, but I mostly use adapted Canon and Sigma lenses. Um, yeah, I'll test the video autofocus for that. If that's improved, I'll, I'll tap on a video um, on, onto the end of this right now. If it hasn't, then you won't see a video on that. Anyway, so um, yeah, thumbs up to Sony for giving us uh, an update which actually has some pretty good functions. Uh, other thing I forgot to mention, it now has Animal IAF as an option, which is cool for those, you know, the wildlife videographers, I guess, but me personally, I found it. I found cat's eyes and animal's eyes before, so I don't exactly know what it's done to um, uh, update that. Maybe you know, for you know, bird's eyes and stuff like that, they, it just the, the the old algorithm just wouldn't detect that as a face. It wouldn't detect the eye, whereas now is it will. I don't know. I'm not a wildlife guy, so you have to ask somebody else about that one. But it's another cool feature, I guess. I'm not going to be using it, but yeah, still pretty cool. Uh, anyway, guys, hope that's useful and peace out. And yeah, here's a little time lapse. But I'm just about to go out and shoot now.